I want to welcome you to miracles. I want to welcome you to the atmosphere of miracles. I want to welcome you to the atmosphere of miracles. Because you will not live without miracles. Welcome to the atmosphere of miracles. Hey, thank you, Holy Spirit. I want you to worship God in a way you have not done a long time. I want you to, for a moment, forget that you are in this hall or anyone is around you and spend some few minutes in the next two minutes. Worship God. Let it be from the depth of your heart. If, if it is your dialect song you want to sing, make sure you are connected with what is happening right now. Worship God from the depth of your heart. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Don't worship him from the fruit, from your lips. Make sure you worship him from the depth of your heart. I am giving you about two minutes. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Nebele do sana barada kote belita na dos ina barada barada ba zeke petu kete leke mana na to sete belete ne mana na leke pete kute te belete kute mto lo sete riba kata nira barada bala te de kete koro sete ba mama na mana mana na no no soto ke bala na bala tai leke peke soko sete le na na bala na 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 le se pele tu se de bala na bala na kose. Manana do se ke pa da bara i ta du ke se te pele ni na na ko pa le ke pele ke te le ke de bara da bala na mana na ma ma mara da ba ka bala 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 da bala da ba se le tu sa na ba ya da le ke pele ke ba la ba ko se ni i na do sa da bara da ba ka pa le ke te le te ne be la da bara da na ko se zi na na bara da ba ka bara da se le tu se te pa le ko se te le ba na na ma la da ko se he zui ke pele ke le bara da ko pa Le katina na bila kuse ne bela dai, le kuisa para da bakapa, mara da bakapa para da bala tana na balais. Se le tuise te pe ke se dia ina ta bila kira kuse ne, le kuisa na bara na na mana kuse, iko pe si na na kuse na marai, le kuisa da bara da bakapa la da da balai, le kuise le ke le bara kapa la, le ke pa 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 la, raba ko pa pa ye ne bara la, se ne ba na na bara, o se ke pe le ke te, le ke pe. Let me send a bar, let me fill a douche, eat a parada baka pie, let me send a bella telecade, a quiza capa in a macusa, let me fill a capa, pare de baka papa, let me send a debe, lika, samana di la capa, lika paia da baka pie, let me send a da, ima da boy, a capa send a bella, ina cous, ita capa sina, ita cousa, a capella, ita rosa. Marada baka pare, le kus ida kupa na na na, le kapari na kus, e kusa na pa, le kape na na pa, le kusa na pa, le kapa, mi kusa na 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 kapa ya na pa, le si na kapa na na pa. Thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus. In Jesus, mighty name we have worship. Brother, we want to do something very important, but let me prepare. Early this morning, during our fresh fire service with the workers who were praying, and I shared this secret with them. When you pray in the understanding, you ask for what you know. Remember, the Bible says that you shall ask and you will do what? You will receive. But when you are seeking, you are asking for what is not known. And the only way to search when you are seeking is praying in the Holy Ghost. You may be in church today and you are trusting God for a job. And in the spirit realm, God is saying, this man is about to die and I need restoration for him. When he raised a prayer point of his, God, give me that job. That God knows that maybe in that month, 
that they will give him a job, he will not be alive. When he's seeking in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will take him to a realm where he'll be praying for restoration and not asking for a job. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? The second thing that I shared with them that you need to know as we go is that as we come to church this morning, the devil prepared his agent not to allow this service to hold. He has assigned them with different duties of what needs to be done for someone not to be in church today. Even some that have come say, I want spirit of distraction to be there so that when his case is mentioned, he will not pay attention. And the Lord showed me one day, I was praying the Holy Ghost, I was getting tired. I was getting tired. I feel like I should stop. But the Lord came to my rescue. My eyes was open. And the Lord showed me. I saw a pistol. A pistol gun. You know a pistol gun? I saw a bigger gun. And I saw an equipment in that realm. I have an understanding that that, that that equipment is enough to destroy whatever I want to destroy. Like a nuclear weapon. And the Holy Spirit said to me, which one do you want? And I said to the Holy Spirit, I said, I want that new thing that can destroy everything. I told them, if you are inside the church today, as we are here, and yet there are kidnappers outside who have AK-47 with them, and you are inside there, some of you will find doors through this window. You know there is swimming pool at the other side. So you will notice that there is a door that people can pass out of this place. But in that same place, and the Lord show you and gives you a nuclear weapon, a greater shield that can, you can just quickly see a bulletproof that you are aware with a good understanding that this bulletproof, nothing can come close to me. And he says, pick up something to fight them. Will you take it? Will you take it? That same explanation I've given to you is what is going on in the spiritual realm. Listen to me, brethren. We are seeking this morning. As you pray in the Holy Ghost here this morning, God is empowering you for what you need for the year 2024 and beyond. I am not joking. I have been sent and I'm delivering the message to you. You are going to take the weapon you require. See, those things that defeated you last year will not defeat you this year. Because what you need to carry to succeed this year is made available to you in this service. My question to you is, how much do you want to carry? How hungry are you to carry? How ready are you to take all that you require? So as we pray in the Holy Ghost, remember, you are seeking for what is not known. Media, if you are carrying that camera, make sure you are praying. If you are listening to what is going on online, make sure you are praying. If you are watching us online, make sure you are praying. See, there are special seasons in a man's life. If you miss it, it takes only the grace of God to have such a counter again. That's why I said I welcome you to atmosphere of miracle. Are you ready to pray, brethren? Maybe you are in the auditorium and you can yet not speak in the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. As you begin to pray, the power of God will touch you right where you are. You are going to receive the genuineness of the Holy Spirit and you begin to intercede to take all that belongs to you. Are you ready, brother? I've not come to cajole you. We are going into battle. Listen to me. Going into the new is ending a particular era. The era of weakness, the era of insufficient, the era of rejection is ending and you are entering into a new era. In your destiny, are you ready to pray? Oni shegu lawani Jesu abani da.
And this has been going on months and months now. The Lord asked me to tell you that I have attended to it. You have just received your miracle. I have attended to it. you have done in the past and you are deep holding on to that thing that that thing is already destroying your presence I can't even talk about the future you are holding on to that guilt so much that it has taken the good part of your today and the Lord said I want to give you new and you are right here remember what that, that man said he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Can we, can we, can we intercede all of us? Can we intercede all of us? I want to hear Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, 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 son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. B 
before and listen to me carefully listen to me carefully before you got to church this morning you already made up your mind that after service you are going to come to the altar and pour your heart to God the Lord asked me to tell you that he heard you and he wants you to come now he wants you to come now if you notice if you are in service early enough you saw that it was the white pulpit that was on the altar and the Lord opened our eyes to say that when we have special services like this, we carry that one that our Father in the Lord, Pastor Yadeboe, has anointed. And we bring it on stage. If you are that person, listen to me carefully. I'm not asking the church to come out. You had this premeditated before you came to church that you are going to come. The Lord asked me to tell you, I have heard you. Ask him to come. Ask her to come and touch this altar. Come now. Come now. Come now. He's not all the church members. So I'm telling you, be obedient and you will receive that which you have requested of the Lord. I want you to come. Come, come closer. Come closer. You are touching the altar. You are, you are touching the altar. Why wow, are so many people coming out? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's not that when you got to church, you got inspired to do this. I'm saying you had something in particular you've been trusting God for. And God said, I have heard you. Come now. Come now. Jesus. 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 I want someone to pray more for mercy so that God can find you. Pray more for mercy. Pray more for mercy. Pray for mercy. Pray for mercy. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, 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 son of David, have mercy. Haka para da baka pa pa pa. Raba ka pa pa ra ra kos. Ekwe pele ke te pere de pasada. Ida ka pa ra da baka ta. Le kuisa na na pa ra da baka ta pa. Ika ra ra ba kuse de be. Zele ke de ba na ro kose. Ina ka ra ba na tira kuse ne ba. Le kuse ne ke pa na ka pa la. Oh, ika ra ba jina na kopa. Only you can do this. Only you, only you, only you, only you. La paka shana ba, le kuika shina ita para da paka, le kose ke telebara ina teke peredus e kuika shina ida para da kapara rabaka ina kopari ina skapa. Yes, Lord, para da kaisa ita para so ita ke tele para da balata ita roska da para da basho. Agbara Olorun po O la no sori oku O wo ni teriko Agbara Olorun Agbara He kara ba ko seta I kara da ba ko se Le ka para da ba ka He ka ile bele I kara da ba la ba seta I na ta para da ba ka pa He ka ile para da ba se Zele ne belete, zele ke le brana kosha, lete para na, ika la, ina bala la bala bala na na, e ke le para na ba kosha, e zele ke para na ba na, ina na kapala. The Lord said to me, there is a family here. The best way to describe the family is that since you have been married, since you have been married as a couple, you have not achieved so much. You have not achieved so much as a family. You even think that when you are single, you are doing so well. But when you are joined into this marriage, it seems things are not working the way you ought to work. The Lord asked me to tell you, the mystery of 9,000 has been activated for your family. And uh, uh, let me explain that to you. Let me explain that to you. The Bible says, one will chase a thousand and two will chase how many? Ten thousand. There is a mystery of nine thousand that comes 
in place where to become one. I proclaim over that, over that family. As the Lord has identified your family this morning, in whatever you want to do, beginning from now, either you are laying your hands on the project or you are trusting God concerning your children, whatever you are believing God for, I pray for you, the mystery of 9,000, begin to work for your family in the mighty name of Jesus. For those of you who are out there, I didn't call you out on my own. And that's why there's no need to pray for you because the Lord said, I have heard you. And he wants you to come. Make sure before you go back to your seat, you touch the altar. There is a connect of power that will reach out to you. And I promise you by the mercies of God, you will return back here to testify in the mighty name of Jesus. So go ahead and touch the altar. Touch, touch the altar. And trust God for your miracle. Touch. Oh, la no, so re, oh, good. Oh, Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Choir, stay with me. If you can have your seat, just sit. We need to do housekeeping, a quick housekeeping, and then we, we continue. Help me tell your neighbor, my wonders have started. If the neighbor doesn't believe you, look to another neighbor. Tell that neighbor, you are looking at wonders. Is the person looking like a wonder? Is your neighbor looking like a wonder? Don't worry. Before that person leaves service today, you are going to see a brand new person in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's do a quick housekeeping. Our Father in the Lord has instructed us that before we go into sermon, we should do a review of Sunday school. Sunday school is very important and is part of our service. Today, by the grace of God, we looked at what was called dedication. Dedi what? And we all agree that dedication is a yearning desire to do something. Whether you are chasing your business or you are doing whatever has to do with your life or you are chasing God, anywhere you find yourself, if you find a cause to support, you must do what? Be dedicated to it. And our lesson outline, we looked at something very important that says concept of dedication. We established one truth. My teacher mentioned this. One will, will, to push you forward is what I call dedication. If I tell you today that I was a shy person that couldn't stand before one person to talk, you will not believe me now. Because you will never agree that I'm a shy person. But I could not even stand to read one line of statements before. But the day I gave my life to Christ, I knew that there are many more things that come with it. It wasn't just giving the life. Everything about my life changed. If President Tinubu is seated here, I will not change the message. By the grace of God, I'll still say what the Lord has placed in my heart to say. Are you with me? Dedication pushes you, improves you. We also realize that there are some challenges and prices to pay when you are dedicated to something. Because one of it is you must be disciplined. So if you say you want a prayer life, and you are supposed to wake up. Maybe you agree that by 7 a.m. you are going to wake up to pray. When the alarm goes off, what are you supposed to do? Be disciplined enough to stand up to pray. So whatever you desire to do, you must do it because you are dedicated to it. The Amatan was so strong since yesterday. But today, we are still here in church, early morning. Was he dedicated to it? 
if you are working on a job and they said, you people will resume by 8 a.m., you must be dedicated to be what? To be there by 8 or before 8 self. Self-control must be ready to go all the way, put your body on that, to do whatever you need to do. For example, is our fasting time. We have been asked to fast by the grace of God. Nobody fasts for God. I hope you know that. Is to put your body under so that you can receive from the Lord. What are some of the challenges? Persecution. Do you know people who hate you for being upright? Do you know that? Some people were angry with me at work because I'm the only one that never comes in late. And I never knew. So when uh, the division head comes and you know, talk to others that why are you always late and all. I'm talking about people that lives in Ikoi, people that stays in Banana Island. I have a neighbor, uh, what's going call it, that stays in Banana Island. I will come at nine. We resume at eight. I come from Redemption City. And I'm at the car park by past six or six thirty. Because there is an atmosphere. I need to take charge of the car park and the old building before they come. The day I discovered was the day my car broke down. So I sent a message to the divisional header. I had this, so I'm waiting for the mechanic to come so that I can go. Because it was on the highway. When I walked, they said, thank God. Ah, at least it was late today. And they started the conversation. People can hate you for being upright. Envy. Say, so why, why, why only you? When you are dedicated to something. They say, your own is too much. There's a tiny line between that dedication and eye service anyway. So you must draw the line. When you are not doing eye service, you only come to church when Pastor Leke is in church. When you know Pastor Leke is not going to be in church, you have no business coming. That's not dedication, no. So, you must understand that the reward of dedication outweighs the challenges I've mentioned to you. When you fix your eyes on the glory, fix your eyes on who you are serving, not looking at what they are doing and all that, but focusing. Hebrew, Hebrew showed us, he said, focus, our focus is what? Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and what? Finisher of our faith. So it's very important. So I encourage you to be in Sunday school next week, Sunday. These are more you would have, you would have learned and you know to be full if you made it to Sunday school. Can we celebrate our teachers? Let's celebrate our teachers. The Lord bless you and lift you in the name of Jesus. I also want us to celebrate God in the life of our team that is on the streets church. They've gone out and they are back already. Let's celebrate God in their life. And in the service already, they brought four people into church from that street service. Pastor Titi, can you please help me shake hands with those people? Where is uh, Pastor B? Please help me show Pastor Titi the people that are in church. The four people that came with them. Let us shake hands with them. There is an anointing of God that is reaching out to those people already. If you are there, you are joining us. Those four people, please, just rise on your feet. There is a power of God that is reaching out to you right now. The Lord has identified you in the service. Glory to God. Can we celebrate God one more time? Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Let me tell you something. By the time the service is over, someone is going to take a new Jesus home. You know, the Holy Spirit is singing it back to me, and I won't lose it. The Holy Spirit is singing it back to me. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. If you don't understand your about what we are saying, we are calling Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 15 to 19. Listen, brethren, don't be disappointed. I've not come to preach. We have come to pray. By the grace of God, we've started the year so well. Our, our pastor has, you know, helped us in charting the path for what we are going to do in this year. If you miss those services, please go and watch online. We have done a lot 
or digging into how we can set this year rolling. You see, today, you need the power. You see those things you have written down? You need the power to follow through. You know those who wrote New Year's resolution? Quick, they were quick to do it. I'm going to do this and all that. Today is last Sunday of January. Let me ask you, how many of it have you ticked off? Are they big things when you are ticking off too? Because it may be possible you are ticking off. I'm going to read open heavens. And that's what you have ticked off. Isaiah 43. Read from New Living Translation. And people of God, I want you to pay attention because the word of God is powerful. Remember what Pastor Brian said? The word of God is powerful. It's enough to pierce every heart. So if you key into the word, every other thing is settled. Because it's this word we'll be using to pray. I am the Lord, your only one. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Just let it ring in my spirit. I am the Lord, your only one. Israel's creator and king. Let's go. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. Impossible. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned. Their lives snuffed out like a smoldering wick candle. Well, candle wick. This is what God is going to do for someone here. You see, those who have been oppressing you before now, when they see you, you will become their oppressor in the mighty name of Jesus. I, let's go. But forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I am about to do something new. And listen to this. He says, see, I have already begun. Can I announce to someone, before you came to service, God already began the work of a new thing in your life. Why am I so sure? In the school of disciples, if you remember, our father in the Lord told us, he said, as believers, we are fighting a battle that is already won. Let me take you on a journey, man. I know many of you don't like football, our sisters, but the men, they can relate, right? When Nigeria was playing yesterday, I watched the match. Oh. I watched the match. They say, ah, pastor, too. Yes, I did, though. We had like three hours prayer. Five to six, six to seven, seven to eight. I said, Lord, oh, please, oh, I want to watch the match. When they were about to start the match, they showed the Nigerian coach. He was shaking. He was trying to check his wristwatch because he, the wristwatch is also a digital one. He wanted to press. Maybe something didn't come up, but he was shaking. Go and watch the video. He was shaking. But let me tell you something. If that same guy wants to watch a rematch of what was played yesterday, he is now sitting today. He wants to watch the match. When Nigeria scored that first goal and they canceled it, will he be shaking? Why? That is the atmosphere you have come into. Are you with me? Forget it. The one who is with you is far greater than what you are battling about. And that's why God first gave a testimony. He gave his CV first before he told us about something new. He told us what he did to the division so that he can remember those things he has done. I said, forget all that. You see what I'm about to do to you is far greater than what I've done to the Egyptians. You see, God is so incredible in his way. When, when I read the scripture and the Lord opened my heart, I begin to see things differently. God wasn't sure. Maybe you, we got what he was saying when he said he has already begun. He has to reaffirm it. And he asked, listen to this. He said, I have already begun. But he said, he said do you not see it? After he said he has already begun, he wants to, want to be sure if you are with him, if you understand what he's saying. 
said that we make a pathway through the wilderness. And we create rivers in the dry wasteland. And we create, see, wait to other word, create. There is someone here, what you are asking God for, you can't seem to find it in the Bible. You've been trying to search the scripture, but you can't find it. Can I announce to you? God is about to create a brand new store for you. Because he has that power to create. Hey, Kalabasta. Stay with me. We are going to pray. You know, God is in the business of doing new things all the time. All the time. God is in the business of doing new things. But one thing I have discovered is that we are too consumed with what we want God to do that we don't see the new steps God is taking. We are so engrossed in a certain way. We have seen how God has done it for others. And we are hoping God is going to do it that same way to us. And we are waiting on him to do it that way. But God is entirely doing it in a different way. But yet you can't see it. Why? You are consumed with the activity of how you want God to do it. Some people are already playing God in their life. And why God is there, helping them out, yet they can't see it. Because they are preoccupied with the issues of life. For some, fear has gripped your heart so much. That even when God is saying, I am with you, fear not. You can't hear God in the midst of all of the problems. Because you think time is going. Let me tell you the mystery of time. God himself is the creator of time. So he doesn't live by time. And I'm, I'm going to establish it. When God said that one day is how many what? A thousand. So when God says to Pastor Israel tonight, he said, I will see you tomorrow. What is God saying? What is God saying to you? How old are you? How old are you? The beauty is that he created that time so he doesn't live by that time. So he can fast track your future into the present. He can go into your past and correct things that you need for your future. Because he himself is the time. But the ignorance of it is what the devil uses against us. Say time is going, others are getting married. And God is saying, to your wife you are going to marry, this is the person that is going to push you. He's going to give you the contact to become the president of the nation. So you can't afford to marry any other person. Wait. She just got admitted into the university. You need to wait. Because if you show up now, she won't say yes to you. And you have to wait for four years. Let me tell you the truth. Bishop Oyedeko said that when he went to meet the wife, that I am your husband. Do you know what the wife said? She said, I have waited enough for God to make you what I was waiting for. Do you know why? God told this, the wife long time ago that Bishop is the husband. But she didn't see anything. She's too, she's, when, when he was starting out, he said, no, God, I don't want this, this man. I need to create a man I want. And God sent Bishop on a journey to become the man of the wife. Two days, all brothers are opening their mouth to you and then you are just there because you are also clueless. Because you lack understanding. Let me tell you something. When you are waiting on God, it's a hard thing. No? Don't let anyone lie to you. There are sacrifices to pay. It's easy to go on a dating site and pick a wife. It's harder to wait on the Lord to hear this is my wife. But do you know what? The pain you get when you pick that babe on the, on the dating site, on social media or whatever, is nothing compared to the pain you get while you are waiting on the Lord. So weigh your options. Let me tell your neighbor, are you ready to pray? The Lord is asking us, this new beginning, can you see it? 
This new thing God wants to do in your life. Can you see it? Remember, faith is what? What? Hebrews. Faith says that what? Not what you have not seen physically, but evidence of things that are made available to you. And I will show you. Let's look at Hebrews 11.3. Let's understand this mystery. I will show you that everything that you see visible was made from things that were not seen. Hebrews 11.3. The Bible says, by faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Can I pray for someone here? The new glory of God over your life that has been stolen and waiting or has been attacked by the devil. Before we leave this service, the glory will be revealed on the, upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. What was not seen has been made visible. The Lord himself we announce you this year 2024 in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, thank you Holy Spirit. Why the ministers were praying this morning, earlier this morning, the Lord revealed to us and he said to me, he said that I am raising a special force. Remember, I'm raising special force. You know what they call special force in the army and all that? So there is a special assignment of God that God wants to get involved. And he's raising people to solve that prayer. He said, I'm raising a special force that will be a solution to this generation. And they are in service. Can I pray for you? If you are one of that candidates that God wants to use, the mantle of God, as I speak from this altar, will fall upon you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God is sending some out as a leader in those places that they are deficient of good leadership. The Lord is sending some people forth as opposed to, to be his voice in certain places where people are not speaking. The Lord is sending some of you to the social media that you think is already perverse to become a voice in that place. You will become one of the candidates of this special force in the mighty name of Jesus. Whether you see it or not, God is already on the move. He said, I have already begun. That's his word. And this is not part of the message. Listen to me. I have a message for those special force. You know, in finance is one of my call area, and I get to this, you know, check again and again. In my search of money in the Bible, I also discovered that Jesus used money so much than any other parable, which means that money is very important, right? When the Sadducees came to Jesus and told him about tax, and they said to him, why have you and your disciples have not paid tax? What did Jesus say? What did he ask for? What did he ask for? Bible scholar, yes sir. What did he ask for? Oh, God bless you. That's a Bible reader. Jesus said, bring me the money, one currency. Do I have any money? And he said, he said, whose image, whose image is on this money? God bless you, sir. He said, whose image is on this currency? And they told him, who? who? They said, Caesar is the one on it. And Jesus said, go into the ocean and pick money and pay what Caesar belongs to Caesar. But he didn't stop there. Listen to this. He said, and give God what belongs to God. God's definition of money is his image. Remember, he said he created, you go to Genesis, he said he created you in his image. So God is in the business of spending people. No, let me rephrase. God doesn't deal with people. God is in the business of spending individual. So, when he needed help with the disciple, he was spending on Peter. At some point, he was spending on Paul. At some point, he was uh, in our generation, he's spending on Daddy Dio. God spent people. Now, the special force, listen to me. God is about to spend you. Your new thing 
for this year is that God is about to spend you. Are you ready for God to spend you? Did you receive that? Ah, thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. I want to empty my pocket for you. Jesus, Jesus. Because I was looking at where. Where is this money? Jesus. Yeah, somebody's miracle in this service. Oh. God says, I'm about to spend you. I want to spend you. I want to spend you. It's in the his currency is spending people. He want to spend you. Are you ready? Let me tell you something about a new beginning. A new beginning usually Start with an ending of an era. So when you find someone who is sick, when God healed that person, that person has come to a new life. When you find someone who is poor, and God has released resources to that person, that person has become what? Rich. If God look at a blind person and he receives sight, what has happened to that person? A new thing has started. But let me tell you something. Anytime God is in the business of doing new things. We, the receiver, we are entering into what I call unknown. And that's why we are always afraid of a new thing. Naturally, when you meet human resource experts, they will tell you change is very difficult. Why? People don't want to change. When you give them a new tax, they are afraid to start a new because they want it to go the same way it has been happening before. But can I tell you the truth? When you step into the unknown, one of the things that will be tested in your life as a believer is your trust level with God. Is your, is your what? Your trust level. You see, when you can undo it, when your bills, you can pay your bills, you, there is a certain way you pray because you know that when you leave church, you will pay for that thing. But when you don't have money to go back home and you are on a faith level that I'm not going to walk home, Somebody is going to take me home. Oh, I have resources in my pocket to take me home. Pastor Lewis, where are you? Where are you, Pastor Lewis? Remember, I can't remember the year, but remember many years ago, Pastor Tuji, we came for a retreat. And Pastor Tuji said that we should empty our pocket. Everything that we came, I came from, I came from my campus. I can't remember how much it's going to take me back to campus at that time. And this was a bit difficult. And the man of God, the, this man was, he, maybe he was 19 or something. He was just like a year or two older than us. And he said to us that everybody in that retreat, we must empty our pocket. And we all did. How do I go back? That time, there's no phone now. No phone to call that. Maybe I want to call somebody. I said, if you are going to go, you will pray for resources. Yeah, that God will send us resources to go. When you step into the unknown, your legs will shake. When God starts dealing with you, if, the God, if it's the same God I serve that wants to drive the, the car of your life, you will be afraid of what is going to happen. If you check Peter for an example, Peter, Peter, Peter is an, es, an expert in fishing. Peter doesn't need to pray to fish. He has mastered his art. Even the Bible recognizes there is a senior guy. There is a senior person in fishing. But look what happened to him when he stepped into the unknown. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 23. The Bible says, when they were going through storm, as a fisherman, he knows there will be storm when they are fishing. In fact, the Bible records that there was a time they fish all night. He knows where to go and fish. So when he sees storm, you know that he needs to stay inside the boat. That sometimes they will move past the storm and get to a place where it's okay. But God is asking him to step into the unknown. He stepped his foot out of the boat where it was secured into where it's not secure. And as he began to go, he was in the miraculous. Can I tell you, brethren, there is nobody in the Bible that has ever done what Peter did. He had a brand new miracle. But the moment is education. 
his expertise began to speak to his head just like you God is saying I want to relocate you to America and you are saying that how no no family members uh, admission is not possible uh, this one you your brain is telling you what is not possible but God says that I need you in the time of life in America as I speak and you are wondering how is it going to happen the more you try to figure it out the more confused you become what do you need at that time trust and thank God for Peter when he was going down when the issues of life was drowning him he remember what he's supposed to do he cried out for him are you ready to cry for help? before we continue I want you to stand up and pray stand up and pray see maybe you are the one that has been affecting the expansion of God over your life Maybe you are the one that has been limiting God over what God wants to do. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, I wrote this down, but I forgot it. I wrote this down. Before you made this prayer, let me tell you this. The Lord said to me when I was praying in my room yesterday. He said, for someone this week, for someone, you are going to be called for an opportunity. He said, don't say no. Listen, 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 before you say amen. He said, do not say no. It's bigger than you, but don't say no. That is the new thing I want to start with you. You are coming. See, listen to me. If you get that call, I want you to come and share your testimony. Don't hide it. You are going to get a call this week that we are going for something big that you don't have capacity to do. It's, you may think about collaboration or people that are going to help you to get it done, but don't say no on that call. Accept it. Are you ready to pray? I want you to pray and cry your hearts to God. Lord, if I'm the one standing in your way to this newness, if it is fear, that is limiting me on this journey. Take them away. I submit them. Can you cry and ask the Lord that, Lord, I am ready for the new. Can you cry, Lord, I am ready for the new. Don't pray this a silent prayer. Pray. Intercede. Pray. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Pray, brethren. Tell the Lord I am ready for the new. I am ready for the new. Cry, 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 cry. I am ready for the new. 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 If I'm the one standing your way, I submit them this morning. I submit them this morning. I am ready for the new. I am ready for the next level. I am ready for this new beginning. Kapara da bakosha ta, lekepele kala kosha, ina kapa ya na da bara, ita rosha kaka, leko kepele kala ba, ina tola pas, ete sele berada, ima na rosha, ina kapa rida da ba. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we are free. Have your seat if you can sit down. Have your seat. What happens? When God begins a new thing, there are some signs you will see. I've told you, you will venture to the unknown. But you know in the midst of it, you will be at peace. Because God doesn't put us into trouble. There will be peace of mind. There will be peace. There will be presence of peace of God in it. Now let me tell you something. You must be ready to walk alone with God. When God starts something new, you must be what? Be ready to walk alone. I have said the scripture, and I have seen that anytime God wants to start something new, He separates people from the multitude. Separation. You see, God does not like to share His glory with any man. If you have come, that you are showing up because you, Pastor Leke is going to give you something. God will make Pastor Leke distant from you. When he's ready to do something in your life, it seems as if people around you are not supporting you. Somebody is here, it's, it's like Holy Spirit is identifying your case. It seems like the uncles, the aunties around you, they seem not to understand that you are going through this problem. You know, it's not like they don't know. The problem is, no man can get any help except God first help that person. And it seems like you are now abandoned. Nobody cares. Nobody. So you have lost a job. So nobody is trying to, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Yesterday while I was praying, 
the Lord said to me that someone has lost a job. And I should let that person know that God is about to compensate you. I wrote it down in my book. He said to me, you have lost a job last year. It was even precise. He said last year you lost a job. That this year I'm going to compensate you. And I'm waiting for your testimony. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for your testimony to come. Now, you may think nobody cares about you. God is about to do something new. He separates you from that because he doesn't want them to share in that glory. How many of you are here that God has showed up for you and you look around, you know that this can only be God. It can only be God. I don't know if I've told you that story before. In my finals, when I wanted to graduate, my course advisor told me that it will make sure I don't go to service with my, my mate. He knows that he cannot, he cannot fail me by the grace of God. I'm one of the persons that was leading the class. So he cannot fail me. He knows. But he said, I will sit on your documentation that you will not go to service with your mate. Why? He said, I don't join the Akakos. I'm, I just, they told him that me, I'll just come to class, I'll go to church, I don't even care about the department. What will I do? A young man that wants to survive. The first day I came to the office, come out, he sent me to go and buy food. A 400 level student. I'm not saying that I'm proud, but sending me to cafeteria to go and buy food. And I asked the other guys, they said, ah, that's what they do, they will wait on him from morning to evening. Ah, I have fellowship. I have this one to do. I have that one. I can't do it. He said, ah, that's how we survive. I said, I won't do that. And he said to me, it, it's not so. You, we, I still remember we had the car park like this. He told me, I will be on your case. You will not. If you don't go for service, have you graduated? Imagine that my fellowship members, my juniors, we are the one we are serving together. They say, what kind of God is he talking about? And I began to pray. That year, the governor sent a letter of those they were retiring. Professors that have gone like three years, four years on those sabbaticals. He said he wanted to clean up. He can't keep paying their name. And the name of my course advisor appeared. A doctor that is just starting his career. He was part of those that were, that were sacked. There is absolutely nothing anyone can tell me. I didn't go to, I didn't even have a, my father is not a professor. I didn't, have a, I didn't report him anyway. I only reported him to God. So when I saw his name, I knew it was only God that could have done this. Can I pray for someone here? You've looked around. It seems that there is no help anywhere. I pray for you in the name that is above every other name. The Lord is going to help you. I'm not joking about this. From this service, from this service, the Lord will locate you and you will receive divine help in the mighty name of Jesus. Now let's dig down a little and then we'll begin to pray. How do you respond to God when he starts a new thing? How do you respond to God when he begins a new thing in your life? Number one, you must possess the word. That word of God that comes to you, you must possess, you must take possession of it. Romans chapter 10 verse 8. You must possess the word. You must take ownership of the word. You must believe in the word that has been spoken to you. He said, in fact, he says, the message is very close at hand. It is in your lips and in your what? Your heart. And that message is the very message about the faith that we preach. Don't lose Jesus. As you go in the year 2024, don't do what? Don't, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Let it be in your lips. Let it be in your heart. This new thing that God is about to do, when people remind you of your past, tell them that past is gone. Forget it all. A new thing has started in my life. Number two, what do you do? When you receive, when you, when you respond to what God is doing, you must declare the word. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. Declare the word. Do you think it's a joke or we feel like ending service by making declaration? 
You've heard several testimonies of people that have come out and said that we proclaim, we said this, and the Lord established it. Listen to me, brethren. There is power in incantation. It's one of the power that witchcraft use. Incantation. Saying the same thing over time. Saying the same thing over time. Saying the same thing over time. You speak over the atmosphere. One of my brothers, we were on a call on Tuesday, and one of my brothers said, the reason why he wakes up early to pray is because he don't want some certain people to first pollute the atmosphere. So he gets up early to take charge of the atmosphere before they come. I'm not joking. If you have not been doing it, I'm telling you, start doing it. When I, as I'm parking the car, the car park, I'm taking authority of my organization. I'm praying for my leaders. The hand of God is rested upon them. They can't afford to make mistake. Here, I am favored. Here, I will be celebrated. Here, I will be celebrated. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you have a boss that is victimizing, you begin to pray for that, for that boss. Ah, you don't know what you carry. There's so much power with you. In my former organization, my, my, my boss cannot call me by name. Can't call me by name. Say, Pastor. You know, when they begin to give you a nickname, something has happened to you. Some of you, they call you believer, you are shy. You want to say, no, 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 no I don't want that. Just call me by my name. Ah, what they see, proclaim what you want, declare what you want. Or somebody wrongly call you one nonsense name. I don't shun that person immediately. That's not who I am. I know who I am. Declare the word. What do you want to see? You want to get married this year. Pastor, listen, you. Listen, Pastor, someone wants to get married this year. You are busy with sisters that are not married. And those ones that say, I've given up on marriage. I'm not even interested. Maybe in two years' time. That's your, that's your atmosphere. And they are speaking wrong things over your life. You should look for newly wedded couple that are happy to be in marriage. People that are now married. And let them speak over your life. I can't wait to see your wedding gown. Ah, we are going to celebrate a lot during your wedding. How many guests we are going to host? The man has not come. But we are already celebrating what we want to see. We're declaring what you want. Those are the things you, if you have a friend that can't, if you have anybody on your colleague that you cannot come back, please pray for me. I need prayer right now. Continue to pray for me. You are not yet finding good friends. You know, I used to play with one of my younger um, brother, um, Toba Ajay. Each time I see, it, he's a man of prayer. When I see, I say, Pastor, what is God telling you about me? What has God revealed to you about me? When you say, how many, how many scriptures have you read? What is God teaching you now? Those are the friends I need around me. And that's why I won't have many friends. But the ones I have, they are quality set of people. How do you respond? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, go to 16 and 17. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. And this should be your testimony. He said, that is why we never give up. Can you see this statement that Paul was saying here? This is Paul's statement. Through our bodies are dying. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are renewed, what? Every day. Go, let me show them. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Why? Yet, they produce for us a glory that vastly outweigh them and will last forever. What you will receive in God's presence this morning will last forever in your life in the name of Jesus. I see a new glory of God in the bridge that when people walk into our auditorium, they will not go back the same way they have come in the mighty name of Jesus. Quickly. I want to, I want to just show you two more things and then we'll begin to pray. In the journey of a new thing, your response is that you must encounter God. Listen to me, brethren. I have not seen anyone who genuinely carries the power of God that have not come in contact with Jesus. There must be a point in your life that you know that something new happened to you. It is a point of encounter. 
I can't begin to share many testimonies of the encounter that I have with Jesus. But that point of encounter is very important. If you look at the book of 2 Kings chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 2 to 7, we won't be able to read because I want us to pray. There was a widow there, a widow who was married to a prophet. But you see this prophet, he died in his own poverty. He was so wretched that he left some debt for the family. That he got to a point, the creditors came and took the two sons. What a shameful testimony. But that woman encountered God. The Bible says, Elisha came and had an encounter with this woman and gave instruction. He said, you know what? Go to your neighbor's Borrow as much as possible that you can carry. But something is about to happen to you. He said, the oil will not stop flowing until everywhere is full. Is there anyone in service today who want God to anoint him? Oh, I know it may not be anointing service. Anointing doesn't mean that oil is dropping your hair. There is a capacity of God that can drop in your life, that can anoint you for your next level. And the Bible says, the woman went to borrow. Oh my goodness, if I was a woman... I will borrow the old city. And the Bible says, the pain and shame of owing others, that was the end of it. Can I pray for someone here? You are currently in what can be described as a position of shame. That is something that is not working in your life. Or maybe you are actually owing debt. And you are trusting God to pay off that debt. I pray for you from the mystery of things that is not seen, that show us the things that are seen. From today, that shame has been replaced with glory. That depth has been replaced with abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. And you said that there was a woman who the husband too died and they were owing a lot of money. The bank came and took all, almost all their property and all that. She, she came for prayer. And Ajio said, when uh, they made it, you know that Ajio is fond of saying, and we pray a simple prayer. In that simple prayer, you know what that simple prayer means? <laughs> There's so much power in it. And then, Daddy said that, the woman went back to the bank. And the bank said that, we are sorry. <laughs> There was an error somewhere. You are not, it's not you that is owing us. We are the one owing you. Ah, what an accountant. I don't know why I'm telling you this story. Can I announce to you? What you think is impossible. Because you have come under this auction this morning. What you think is impossible. The Lord will prove to you. That is nothing because it's going to sort you out in the name of Jesus. In your plan, you made a plan that this is going to take you five years. I speak to the one who controls the time and season. He will withdraw that five years and made it happen for you this month in the mighty name of Jesus. One more. This woman with the issue of blood caught my attention. In Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 26, this woman with the issue of blood. This woman, the Bible says that she has tried all. She has gone to different physicians trusting God for healing. In fact, one of the things that interests me was the fact that she should have been tired at that point. I just believe that this is my own cross. I'll just, you know, doctors have written so many people that say, you see this cancer, just go and prepare to die. There are some people on that road, as I speak to you. Medically, there is nothing that can be done again. They say, just go home and prepare to die. That was the case of this woman. That's the case I call hopeless situation. Well, here's the good news. The woman heard that Jesus was in town. Can I announce to you again? Welcome to the atmosphere of miracle. 
And she said to herself, you know what? I've had enough. All I need, I don't even want this man of God to lay hands on me. I don't want this man of God to, to pray for me. All I need is just to find a way to touch the hem of his garment. What a faith. What a big faith. I know at that time, if I know that, if I was living at that time, and I know that Jesus was there, is that to make sure that I'm in the evening service? And maybe when he's going to lay hands, he's going to lay hands. Some people come into service, and because their case are not mentioned, or maybe the pastor didn't lay hands on them, they think that, oh, they've not received anything. Let me announce to you, before you came, we've asked the Lord that for every seat you are going to sit down on, there's a miracle already waiting for you. That was the prayer we pray. That at least one miracle that you are going to take home. So just by coming in, you are going to encounter God that will deliver your miracle. And the Bible says, on the touch of Jesus, that woman was what? Was made whole. As you begin to pray this morning, the same God who healed this woman with the issue of blood is available here. Whether you are just asking God, speak about my case, oh God, I don't want to leave the service without this, or you are giving God a timeline, I don't care. What I care about is that whatever you are trusting God for, according to his will for your life, it will come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Tap your neighbor, it's time to pray. Rise up on your feet. Are you ready to pray? Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. You know, the word of God came, word of knowledge came for a family that says that the mystery of 9,000 begin to work for that family. And uh, anything they do beginning from now, they will see the mystery of 9,000. That's That multiplication is going to work. I also want us to key into it. So we are going to be praying with someone. So, remember, one chase a thousand, two chase, ten thousand. So that with the speed, we can go in the speed of light. But make sure you are holding someone that can pray for you. Eh? If you notice the person can't pray for you, you just apologize and move to, to the next person. But make sure you are holding someone who can pray with you. Are you ready to pray? Jesus, 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 Jesus. You are going to lift your voice. You say, Father, every gate standing between my new beginning, let them come down flat. And let this person I'm holding walk into that new beginning. Did you get it? You say, Father, Father every, gate every gate standing between me, standing between me and, my and my new beginning, let it come down flat. Come down flat. Open your mouth and begin to declare to the life of that person. Jesus, Jesus, he caparada bakush, he kwepele caparada bakush, zeneteba, he na caparada bakapaj, zeneteba. Gates, oh ye gates, come down flat. Let the power of the Bakapa, I the word, pass on the capacity. Let we get the power of come down flat in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying.
Close your eyes. All eyes closed. The Lord said to me last night when I was praying, He said, Pray for my sons and my daughters. He said, They are deliberately rebellious to me. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. He said to me, He said, You are deliberately, you know what you are doing. I have been rebellious to God. He said, because of some disappointment, because of some hurt and some pains that you have gone through in the past, you have made up your mind to be rebellious. Leave the hands of your neighbor. If you are that person, raise your hand. All eyes closed, please. All eyes closed. The Lord told me last night. Oh, thank you. Come, come, come. 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 Come, come, come. 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 Pasha Nanabaka. Come, 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 come. You are, you are rebellious. He, you, you've taught some point that you thought that God should rescue you. That God should, that God should come through for you. But it seems God didn't come through for you. It seems God didn't show up. You understand what I'm saying? It's from the place of disappointment. And the Lord said there is restoration this morning. Come, 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 come. There's restoration for you this morning. There's restoration. He told me in my prayer room yesterday. He told me. You are, you are here, yes. You are just hanging in there. You are just hanging in there. Trusting that uh, something can happen. And God says that, yes, I know. I know. And I've come for your rescue. I am here now. I am here now. Now. I want you to pour your heart to God. Genuinely, pour your heart to God. Pour your heart to God. I'm going to give you some time. Pour your heart to God. You are in that difficult place. You know, you are in that difficult place. Let me read the If you want to cry, cry. If you have to cry, cry. Whatever you have to do, do it in, in his presence now. Do it. Ina kopara na ba shana na baka, kesele brede kepa, la parusa na na baka pai, lete de berkusa na bai. Cry, 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 cry to him, cry to him, cry to him. This is your new beginning. You told me in my prayer room yesterday. Kapa satakaya, sele bele kapa, le kopa la ba shana, kapara na ba kapa. Pray, brethren. Now, you are in there. I want you to cry to God that God should open a new chapter for you. Ask God to open a new chapter for you. We are in a new year. Ask God to open a new chapter for you. The word of God has come forth. The Bible says, My word will not return back to me except it has accomplished that which he has proposed it to do. Ask God to open a new chapter to you. Some of you are trusting God for businesses. Ask God to open a new chapter to you. Ask God to open a new chapter to you. Parana bakapai. Lene bele kanda kapai. Ina kaparosh. Ekwi kapala na. Ika rabashara. Rabakapara na bashara. Zele kepe luko sota Mima na da bara makosha Zele bara makosha Ke bara na makosha Zele de bara Ima ko bara makosha Ask God to open a new chapter to you Ask God to open a new chapter to you Raba ka bara Zika rada bako pash Reba ka raba koshata Le kepe liada Ima no shanda da bara Le kepe liada 
Amen. All those, all those that I called out, come back, come back, come back, come back, come, come, come. Um, Pastor Ryo, I want you to get, I want to get all their names. I want to get all their names and number. Come, come, come. All of you, all of you, come. Pastor City, come. I want you to lay that on them. There's a mantle coming upon you. Come, come. If you are there, come, come. Don't leave. Come. There's nothing to be ashamed of. God just found you. And he's starting a new, a brand new chapter for you. You are the first to receive it. You are the first to receive it. Stay. I, because I, I want to continually pray for you. Because we are going to be business. How God is going to transform that situation into your desirable state. So stay with me. Find a pen and paper for them. I want them. I want to take their details. Ajua zoko. Kanu benu chucha. Eta la basata. Ajua zoko. Kanu benu chucha. Hey, chatua ke o mena chatua ke o. Hey, karaba kapala na chatua ke o mena chatua ke o. All eyes close. All eyes close. All eyes close. Do you know why I heard the Lord said to me? He said, I want to help this person, but it doesn't belong to me. That breaks my heart. The Lord said to me, you are there. I want to help that person, but it doesn't belong to me. She doesn't belong to me. Now listen to me. I don't care if you are a worker. Or you are the wife of our assistant pastor. You know...
Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, what a sweet name, Jesus. Oh, the blood. Now, if you have written your name for me, for those who I called earlier, you can go back to your seat now. If you have written your name, by the special grace of God, I will be praying for you. She's wise. You know you are in doubt. Guys, pray. Ah, don't keep quiet. Pray. Pray. A new beginning has started. Pray. Don't, don't, don't relax. Don't relax. Pray. Pray. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Come, come. Of Jesus, Baka Palabas, Baka Palabas, Zeke Paladabas, Coco, Coco, Sepa, Coco, Parada Paco Shata, Leke Parada, Sikarabaco Shata, Rebaca Paradaba, Rabaca Para. For those of you who are outside here, I saw the hand of God moving in the service and I was wondering why God's hand was is like is he moved and then get to your point and pass by and I began to ask in the spirit why and he said to me this ones does not belong to me and that's why I can't reach out to them that's what I heard the Lord said to me so the first thing we are going to do is to initiate you into what can transform your life and that's Jesus So you are going to say after me. You say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I am tired of the current life I'm living. And I don't want to continue in this life that I'm living. You said in your word that if I come to you, you will not cast me away. I come to you. Please accept me. I declare here today that I belong to you. I surrender my life to you. Please accept me. You have just made that prayer. Initiation has happened. Now, there's going to be every hand of God that is going to come upon you in the next few minutes. Be ready to receive. There's a every hand of God that will come upon you. Whatever God is doing in the life of those who are in the auditorium, God is about to multiply us and get ready for it. Church, are you ready to pray? If somebody is sitting down, help that person up. Help that person up. He's not. We are in battle. We are in battle. Don't, don't faint now. It's wrong to faint now. It's not a time to faint now. It's a time to press deeper now. We are in battle. You are going to be declaring over your life. Remember what I told you. Your response to God's new beginning. You proclaim what you want God to do for you this year. The windows of heaven, heaven is now open. Can I announce to you, angels are now here to carry this message where you want it to go. It's time to declare. I want you to open your mouth. Remember what I told you. When you pray in understanding, you are asking for things that you know. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you are seeking unknown things, mysteries of life. What do you want God to do for you? What do you want God to do for you in the year 2024? I give you the opportunity. Now begin to proclaim, declare. Now begin to declare those things. Declare those things that you want. Brethren, those of you are in front. The, the power of God is made available to you. Listen to me. Go in that confidence and begin to ask. Ask for what you want God to do for you. 
Ask what God wants to do for you. Don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. Ask the Lord to start with you. This new thing that He has begun in your life, that the Lord should make it permanent in your life. I want to congratulate you. Something has been released to you right now. And you shall see the evidence in the name of Jesus. Before I pray for you, if you are here, you are trusting God for a fruit of the womb. You've been trusting God that this year is the year you want to get married and nothing is going to change it. You made up your mind. And maybe part of your prayer point. Come right now. Pastor Titi, come. There is, I saw the angels with babies here. Alright. For those of you who have given your life, give them the card. Follow my brethren. Follow, follow, follow the gentleman there. And let's follow them to the back. There's a card that will be given to you. Let's go. Let's go. To the back. God bless you. Let's go. Help them. Help them. Help them. Listen to me. I hope you heard what I said. You are trusting God that this year is your year. You are not saying wedding 2025. 2024, you are getting married. And then you are here, you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Kaparada ko shete pelega. 
Rebasana Bakuse Teleba Zele Torose Rabba Kapala Dabasha Zele Paradaba. Pastor, you see, you have a lot of work to do. You should start early. Start, start, start. Start. As a mantle comes upon you, God is fixing your wedding date. As a mantle comes upon you, the angels that are here with babies are handing over your babies into your hand. Nothing missing, nothing broken in the mighty name of I don't care if you don't have a relationship right now, but you are trusting God that this year you are getting married. As the mantle comes upon your head, God is settling all that concerns you. When power pass the sea, your power remains the same. Let the bell and the yes and never Once you get the mantle, you can go back to your seat. Once you get the mantle, just like the day. Believe, believe, believe in your heart. Believe. Once you receive the mantle, you can go to your seat. Your power remains the same. There's a release of power. Yes and never changes. Via God is dealing with us. God is dealing with us. Via I want us to celebrate in the Holy Ghost. I heard my spirit. Celebrate in the Holy Ghost. Celebrate in advance. Because what, what God is doing right now is causing celebration to happen. So I want to join the host of heaven to be part of this celebration. Can we celebrate? Can we celebrate? I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Can we celebrate? Hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, Brother, hey, yeah, yeah, dance, yeah. Dance, dance. hey, yeah, yeah, dance, 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 dance. hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, 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 h
Are you ready, somebody? What's your weapon? Come on, take another position, somebody. Are you ready, somebody? Let's go. service. I launch you into a new dimension of the Spirit of God in the mighty name of Jesus. What your eyes have not seen before, by the power that is made available here this morning, your eyes is open in the name of Jesus. The Lord said, I have already begun. Can you not see? I proclaim over those eyes. You've been walking past opportunity. You'll be walking away from that opportunity that can change your destiny. As you go from service, the Holy Spirit We open the eyes of understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. This word of God will liberate you in the mighty name of Jesus. In this new beginning, you hear a voice behind you telling you where to go. So I proclaim over your life. As you go this way, you receive direction in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever has been confusing you before, whatever that has been putting you on one spot, you are not taking the decision you are supposed to take. I pray over your life. Clarity comes your way in the mighty name of Jesus. For that person that has been waiting for that call, you've been waiting for that email. You'll be waiting for that SMS to come. I go into time and season and speak to the one who was in time and season. I don't know when they program it or plan it that it's going to come. But I went, I have gone back into it and I fast tracked it. If it's going to be in the future, I have gone into the future and fast track it. This week, that email will come through. It seems the people I'm talking to, maybe they are online. Online viewer. Did you hear that? I pray for you. That email, that SMS, that call you've been waiting for. This week, that call will come true. That email will come true. That SMS will come true. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever the devil is planning or the agent of darkness to take away that you have received today. I seal you up by the blood of Jesus. You are untouchable. I said you are untouchable. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are untouchable. In the mighty name of Jesus. I can't wait for your testimony. 
right from today, as your faith can carry it from today, testimony has begun. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ha, ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Do you want to celebrate God one more time? Go ahead and celebrate Him. Celebrate Him. God bless you, choir.